Well, howdy folks, how y'all is? Today is a day in between Good Friday and Easter. I like to call this day purgatory. Anyway, we're gonna make some of my grandfather's famous dish here that he made every Easter called pea salad. It's a Texas thing, a Southern thing. So all across the South, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, on and on, we will see this dish and in honor of my grandfather, I always say, or I usually say at the end of the video, what well, sounds like peace out. But what I'm actually saying, if you slow it down and listen to what I'm saying, it's peace salad. Peace out, everybody. So it sounds like I'm saying peace out. I'm saying peace salad. And that's in honor of my grandfather. Kind of like Carol Burnett used to do the little whatever, you know, type thing. Alright guys, so one of the ingredients in the pea salad is bacon. And I like the thick cut applewood smoked bacon. And I happen to find this brand here, Sugardale, which I've uh, bought before. And it's uh, economy, but it's really a good quality economy. It's uh, been around since 1920. The focus there, and there we go. And uh, hey, $2.99 a package for 12 ounce package is not a bad price at all these days. It looks really good in the package, so uh, yeah, I don't have any problem focusing. But I took one package, chopped it up here, and I'm gonna render that down. Let's start our pea salad. All right, so for pea salad, of course, you need some peas, right? And I like the uh, sweet English peas. Got this bag, it's got three of these bags. I'm doing this for the family tomorrow. Uh, these are one and a half pound bags. Nice English peas. Took me forever to find them, and these are only like, uh, I think they're like uh, $2, maybe just over $2 for the package. The other ones they had were like name brand and they were only 12 ounces and they were like four something a package. Absolutely ridiculous. So anyway, uh, my grandfather used canned peas. I don't like the canned peas as much as I'd like the frozen the IQF. So we're gonna be using these IQF peas. And uh, I'm not cooking these or anything. They've already been hard off in IQF. Uh, they're gonna go just like that. All we're gonna let them do is thaw out a little bit. That's it. Now, if you were making this uh, and you need it for lunch in a couple hours or something, you know, like for your Sunday morning social or something, but after church, well, then you can stick them in the microwave and uh, steam them a little bit, or you can drop them in, blanch them in some hot water. Either way, to thaw them out. But since we're not using this till tomorrow, it's got plenty of time, so we're doing it just like so. When the thumb goes up, it's in your butt. So, my grandfather made his with government cheese. If you don't know what government cheese was, uh, he was a child during the Great Depression. So his family, you know, they give you rations. And this went on through the 80s, I believe. But they would give you like a block of cheese a month, stuff like that. And it was always American cheese. So, and his pea salad always had American cheese because that's the government cheese, what they give you back in the day. Uh, so as years went on, he still used it that way. Now I went to the store and this ain't no, you can't get like the craft stuff already sliced or peel off stuff that stuff's nasty you gotta get the kind they have in the deli counter that they slice fresh look at this bacon and stir here i don't want it to burn up on the floor tell a story all right back to cutting the cheese uh anyway i bought this cheese because it's the only cheese they had in the entire store i, I usually buy i tell them to slice it about that thick and i can cut little chunks in there to kind of match the size of the peas anyway they had no more in the store, no yellow, and the only cheese they had was this one package of white left. And you know, they slice off like, you know, 30, 40 items, stick in a little case for everybody to just grab and go. And this was the last package of American cheese they had anywhere, they said. So uh, I got it. It's white, but, uh, you know, we ain't gonna be prejudiced. It don't matter if it's white or yellow, it's still gonna taste like American cheese. My first name is Oscar Meyer, my last name is Oscar. That's not how that goes. Anyway, uh, yeah, so usually I would have them slice it about that, that thick and give me a couple of slices, chop it up. But uh, it is what we got. So we're going to chop that up. It'll be a little smaller, thinner pieces, but uh, it's going to be good. All right, there we go, folks. Throw a cheese in there. Ooh, yeah. Look at that beautiful cheese footage. It's like the moon has decided to take a dump all over our peas. And we're making a fabulous pea salad. 
You know? Look what I've done here. Look, look what I've done. Look what I've done here. You know? All right, guys, we got a red onion here. We're gonna slice, uh, chop up some red onion, and uh, yeah, throw it in here. All right, guys, let's, uh, yeah. Throw some onions in there, yeah! Woo, I hear the dinner bell ringing already. It ain't even close. Okay, so with your clean hand, or if you just make it for yourself, you can use your dirty hand, whatever you prefer, it's up to you. But yeah, use your hand, and toss that around in there. You know, you can use a spoon, but it doesn't do as good a job. You need to get your hands dirty. Use your clean hand unless you want to use a dirty hand. Uh, that's up to you. But if you're using a dirty hand, do not invite my ass to dinner. Now, somebody like me, I wash my hands, you know, 20, 30 times a day easily. I mean, easily. Mr. Chef can, uh... Oh, yeah, I've got tra crackers in there. We're doing a little clean out of here. So, uh, yeah, she can get tested that or whatever, you know. Uh, that's a box. Damn. Anyway, yeah, I wash my hands all the time. Back to the story. But you take somebody like Baby Stick, for instance. The last time Baby Stick washed his hands was when the doctor washed the damn afterbirth off the damn things. So, I'm getting uh, all mixed up here. Everything's mixed. I got a bag layer coming to the window, so it'll stop in a second when the sun sets a little more. Um, anyway, that looks better. Yeah, you can see the product again. I should it with my hand. My third hand. Anyway, uh... Yeah, you can, uh, you know, I'm sitting here looking at this because that's all the cheese they had. I wanted to get twice as much because I'm making so much for family, you know. So I'm going to, uh, I got some Cheddar Jack. I'm going to throw some Cheddar Jack in there just to bulk it up a little bit. No, oh, soy. No, that's got soy still in it. Do not throw that away, Mrs. Chef. Oh, my all right, so we're getting closer here to making this uh, delicious because, yeah, I just want enough cheese. You're going to put some cheese in your pea yeah, salad, folks. Mrs. Chef's cleaning out the pantry over there. There's no telling what's uh, what's living there. She found some ham glaze from a couple years ago, I think, that I never used. You know, like sometimes you buy a ham and you know some oddball package of shit shows up in the when you open it up. And you're like, what is this for? One of those type of things. All right, now that's looking more sufficiently like it's got enough cheese. So our bacon over here is looking pretty self-righteous. I mean, look at that. That's about. About as perfect as it can get. So, uh, so just a couple little pieces in there, but I'm, I'm just about to cut the fire on this. All right, Mr. Chef's going through the, the cupboards over here because, uh, yeah, I was needing, I did the fridge last week, so she's doing the cupboards this week. All right, so I cut the fire on this here bacon. Now, most time, you would take this bacon grease and you drain this shit off of here, but for this recipe, you're gonna leave that shit in there. It makes its own fucking gravy. Alrighty, folks. So staying true to form like my grandfather did. He always put some dill off in there. So we got some dry organic dill. And he didn't use organic. He just used whatever he had. But that's what I have right now. I'm using whatever I have. So I can put some dill off in there. Like so. Alright, so I let this cool down just a little. It's not just screaming hot anymore. But it's still very warm. Uh, pouring that grease over there. Get this way where the camera doesn't pick up that sunbeam. There we go. Uh, dump that all in there and give that a good toss. Yeah. Mmm, I just snagged a piece of that bacon. That's some pretty good bacon. And this is already starting to look righteous, folks. Like it's fit for a king. And it is. Our king, our Lord Jesus Christ. That will have risen tomorrow. Okay, here we go, folks. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, get you some of that. We still gotta add a few things. I want to thank my brother and sister-in-law for getting this for me for uh, Christmas. It makes doing videos a hell of a lot easier. So right now I'm, I'm fresh grinding pepper in here with the uh, electric grinder. Love this thing. And on the other side, it's got salt. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, folks, lastly, we need some mayo in there. And I prefer Hellman's because it is the best, in my opinion. I know Duke's is good and some of them's good. And if you're in the Miracle Whip, then why are you even watching this video? You just eat at fast food joints anyway. So might as well skip this. You're going to make this at home anyhow. All right, it's going to take, like I said, just almost five pounds of peas. And once we've added everything else in here, it's 
about six pounds of ingredient already. So we're going to need about a half a jar of mayonnaise for this. And uh, yeah, use whichever one you like, folks, for real. I'm just kidding. Uh, if you want Miracle Whip, use Miracle Whip. I don't like stuff myself. But to each his own. I like Hellman's, probably first. And Duke's, yeah, Duke's is probably second for me. And uh, on down the line, I mean, there's the very the very best mayonnaise is one called Koopy. It's a Japanese meal with double egg yolks, really rich. But as far as uh, you know, commercial ones, they sell it everywhere. Hellman's. Uh, Kraft's makes a decent one that's a lot cheaper, so uh, that's another alternative. Boom, boom, boom! Look at there, folks! It's an instant heart attack, ready to clog your arteries. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Yeah. Anyway, that's a lot of mayo, but uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of salad, folks. It's a big ass container of salad. It's huge. So I'm just mixing away here, folks. We'll get it all incorporated, and uh, we'll see what it looks like after we get done. Phoenix has been open forever. All right, folks. Look at there. All right. Remember, these peas are still frozen, so everything is kind of clinging to them right now. So everything's mixed. We're gonna wrap this up and stick it in the fridge tonight. These peas will slack out a little bit, and there'll be a little bit of liquid, not a ton of these, because you know they have a, a husk and all, so they're not gonna just bleed out, you know, lots of water, but they're gonna leave some out. When that happens, it's going to be perfect to mix one more time and it'll be all creamy looking like it's supposed to look. So there we go. That's what it looks like right now. And then overnight, stir it again. It's going to look beautiful. All right, folks. So I put this big batch. I'm going to put it in the fridge. Take it to my family tomorrow. I'll toss it one more time right before uh, we eat and it'll be perfect. This one here, I pulled off some for me and Mrs. Chef tonight. Way more than what we'll actually probably eat. But I made so much. I made like six, seven pounds of it. Um... I'll show you what this one looks like here in a few when it gets all thawed out all the way. Give it about an hour and we'll see what it looks like. Stir it and it'll be perfect. This one will sit in the fridge and it'll be the same way tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what this looks like and conclude this video. Right, there we go, folks. Dinner time. It's been several hours since I made this now. And it's all kind of did its thing. Look at that beautiful pea salad. That looks delicious. Anyway, we're doing that with ribs and corn. And uh, it's like 11 o'clock at night. It's time to eat. All right, folks. Let's try this pea salad. Mmm. Y'all see it yet? There it is. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mm, yeah, pea salad is perfect. You get the bacon, you get the smokiness, you get the onion, which gives it that, you know, sharp bite to it. A delicious little uh, side dish, for sure. Make you some. Ooh, we have changed the terminology of Easter to Feaster. This is a feast, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Uncle Feaster. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this uh, rendition. I hope you uh, understand why I say uh, peace out, everybody. Um, this is why. And uh, something I carried over from my grandfather. So uh, awesome man. Been gone for over two decades now, but just the inspiration of my life, you know, that made everything work out. Anyway, thank you guys. See you guys next time. And. Peace out, everybody.